but they were just great straight ahead straight ahead rock i like new this stuff. jersey yeah. rock and roll so good uh pat denizio was their singer he was the founding member and did most of the work in the band and he died about six seven years ago he had gotten himself into pretty bad shape and um but i guess they're going back on the road i don't know if they're coming here but they're going on the road with like a revolving door of guest vocalists hmm. So Marshall Crenshaw, if people know him. Robin Wilson, who's the singer of the Gin Blossoms. I do like me some Marshall Crenshaw. He's got a great voice. Both of those guys. Oh, Gin Blossoms are great, too. Yeah. So Bad Denizio's voice was such kind of a, a distinction, a distinctive part of the smithereens, obviously. But love those guys. So the other dudes are uh, kind of um, uh, going around the country when they get booked and seeing who they can have uh, front the band with them. And, but, man, they're good. I haven't thought about the smithereens in quite a while. I will have another $1,000 for you in about seven minutes. 3.30 is that next keyword for you to grab $1,000. In about a half an hour, I'm going to put somebody else on my tubing team, the Coxsickles. If you want to join us uh, for the uh, 12th annual Alan Cox Show Polar Blast Battle. We're doing it back at Boston Mills Brandywine on Friday night, February the 23rd. And it's completely free to come out and hang with us. We do have a link if you just want to get yourself like the all-night tubing pass. Those are only 34 bucks. So, alancockshow.com, hit the contest page there, link to buy those tickets. But otherwise, you can just come hang. We do our race, each one of us captain of our own team, staffed by you guys. So, it's really on you uh, to win for one of our teams. And then we go to the lodge and party. Mattitude's going to be spinning. And the drinks will be flowing like wine. So uh, WMMS.com or AlanCockShow.com for the details. But about half an hour, I'll put somebody else on my team. Now, next week, we're going to be taking care of Bill's team. Every day, we'll put somebody on Ice Is, which is Bill's team. Mm -hmm. I will also have... Recruiting you for Ice Is. Recruiting you for Ice Is. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll also set you up to see Gary Clark Jr. Oh, nice. When's he coming? May 24th, he's going to do Jacob's Pavilion. I'll have more Sonic Temple weekend passes for you. And I mentioned that they announced that REO Speedwagon and Train show. And so if that's your vibe, I will have tickets for you for that. They're doing mid-July at Blossom. REO, Train, and the Yacht Rock Review. Somebody better get Boaterhead on the phone and start raising holy hell. Why they are not on the Cleveland stop of the REO Speedwagon and Train tour, I don't know. I don't know what the hell Yacht Rock Review is. Unless they had to change their name again. <laughs> There's a chance. <laughs> there is a chance. Unless I'm just not in the know. But I don't think so because I'm on their mailing list. And I think I just got a Boaterhead update. But they've done the uh, Alan Cox Show cruise a uh, number of times and um, had a lot of fun with them. So, anyway, that's next week. Uh, but this week we'll put you on my team, the Coxsickles, uh, next week Bill's team, and then the week after... Because Mary will be joining us for the Polar Blast. Her team, Snow Babies. Get some people on there. Cavs at home tonight before they hit the road for a few. They're going to play the lowly Detroit Pistons. But any given Wednesday, fortunes can turn. So 7 o'clock tonight, the Romo Fijo. Tip off Pistons, Cavs here on the buzzard. I saw Baker Mayfield is getting subbed in in the Pro Bowl. Yep. Pro Bowl, of course, is got to be a bittersweet assignment because you're only in it because you're not playing in the Super Bowl. Exactly. <laughs> so I saw and then those... a lot of guys are like, oh, I'm injured. I can't play anyway. So it's, you know, the it's the scrubs, not scrubs, but not scrubs, but like it, guys, yeah. guys who want to play like they, you know, they're like, well, they don't even play a real Pro Bowl game anymore. They do like a flag football game and they do a bunch of dumb contests. That was my question. All those promos and commercials I saw for the flag football. I was like, are these two separate things? Because they don't want to get hurt. I mean, right. that's right. why they do flag football. Oh, okay. So, and, and I think someone still got hurt last year when they did it this way. <laughs> just, it's. So they've, they've, they, uh, they're trying real hard to make this relevant and it's just never going to be. No, nobody wants to see those guys play flag football. And they, when they play regular football in the Pro Bowl, it, nobody tries because they don't want to get hurt. So yeah. it was always just a letdown of a game anyway. Like nobody, and they used to, the, the, uh, appeal of going to the Pro Bowl back in the day was they would have it in Hawaii. So at least you're in Hawaii, but now they do it all in it's like Indianapolis in, or where are no, they? No, I think I think they're probably doing it in Vegas. Okay, which isn't bad, but it's not Hawaii, right? 
So, yeah, so there's uh, subbing people in either because of injury or something else. Jalen Hurts is going in for Brock Purdy because now Brock Purdy's in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield getting swapped in for Dak Prescott because he got hurt. That He's one of the ones that's like hurt, hurt. Yeah, you know, like, I'm hurt. hurt. I just He just doesn't want to go. Right. So they're putting Gardner Minshew in and uh, Geno Smith's going in for Matt Stafford. Um, Stefan Diggs from the Bills is going in for Amari Cooper because he's hurt. But uh, Joel Batonio is out and Wyatt Teller is in. So at least you get to sub for one of your teammates. That's, that's not bad. That's cool. And Jermaine, it's an honor to go. Like to be yeah. named to the team is always cool, but. I, Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa from your Cleveland Browns is in for TJ Watt and the Pittsburgh Steelers. What, what, what? What, what, what? Pro Bowl games, February 1st through 4th in Orlando. Oh, they do it in Orlando. Orlando, Florida. I was reading a thing about, um, speaking of Baker Mayfield, a guy that used to be a coach for the Buccaneers. He was with the Seahawks. And then his big break came, and he became the offensive coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. So from there, like, that's your last step traditionally before you get your first, like, head coaching gig, right? It's a guy named Dave Canales. And he was the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. But the reason that he is in the news is because he and his wife wrote a book about all of his and their problems called Marriage, the Question That Changed Everything. Well, so, he just got named the coach of the Panthers, That's right. right. Yeah, he, okay, yep, yeah. He's he the said co- he was. Sorry, he, is, he yeah. is the coach of the Carolina yeah. Panthers. So, so he, they did a book, Here's Our Problems? Okay. Well, yeah, that his infidelity, his addiction to pornography, his addiction to pornography, his binge drinking, you got to wonder if his wife would have stayed had he not gotten the Panthers job. Right, and also, bro, it sounds like you didn't want to be married. Details how his young guy, 42-year-old coach, has worked to overcome his problems, and the couple found its way back to a healthy, Christian-based marriage. Okay. Well, which was it, healthy or Christian-based? Because you can't have both. So pick Listen, one. I'm all about moderation, but you don't... You don't you don't fix those things. It like she's gonna hold that over your head forever. It sounds like she just didn't well, want to get not. divorced. I don't know. It just doesn't. He said that with the help Ugh. of counseling and family, one of those you always had, by the way, uh, he no longer has issues with infidelity or pornography, and he stopped drinking completely. I think that third one might have really helped the other two. That's probably by the way a huge helper for the other two. Yeah. Um. And so they wrote this book. And they said we wanted other people to uh, work, wanna, work toward a better marriage. So the message is fine. But yeah. I thought it was funny. They were like a healthy Christian-based marriage, which is basically just, you know, matrimony through guilt, I guess. <laughs> okay. They said that reliving the painful details of their past was like going through another round of counseling. But it helped them. So listen, good for them. I mean, the more you can get out of your own head and just what is, start where, doing the what work. What about the wife's shortcomings? There's a reason he was going to booze <laughs> and pornography and cheating. What was she doing wrong? Where's her uh, guilt and all this? Where's her mea culpa yeah. over there? Cul- culpa. If she had been doing what she should have been mm-hmm. doing as a trad wife. what she say to make him <laughs> cheat? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Look what you made me do. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be over here cheating and porning if you just step up. Cheating and porning. Dave Canales is Mexican-American. He's one of nine minority coaches in the NFL at the moment. <laughs> They're crowing about that being a record. Um, hey, listen, progress is glacial. Good for them. He described himself. And uh, Bill Belichick, the winningest coach, second winningest coach of all time, can't get a job. So, yeah. hey. It is what it is. Yeah. Well, the guy's in his 70s. Mm. He had a good run. Uh, he describes himself as a recovering narcissist. Well, that is a good thing to recover from. Is that something you can recover from? I think so, man. I mean, therapy does a lot for people. I mean, we've all been in therapy. I don't know. Pound cake has? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, not in my adult life, no. Not you were as a kid? 
I had a lot of anger issues. I probably stemming from my sexuality. Yeah, okay. But I I went to like anger management because I would have really bad temper tantrums. Okay. Well, as what they tell you, uh, I got stop tantruming. I had like two meetings and then (laughs) cut it out, queer. (laughs) Jesus, I wasn't out then, so I didn't know where it stemmed from, Uh and they didn't either. But no, I had. I talked to one, one uh, psycho- psychiatrist, and then I went to another one. So I had two first-time sessions, and then I never went back. It wasn't like a me thing. It was probably like a money thing. I don't know. Hmm. That sounds like you figured it out, though. Here's pancake and therapy. Man, shut your ass up. <laughs> at eight, yeah. At eight, at yeah. At eight. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize it. I was I eight shut years your old. ass up. I, I thought this was like teenage years. No, no, no he said as a little kid. Oh, sorry. I was, yeah. I was young. This yeah. was before, I mean, 10 max. Yeah. So I was young. Stop being poor. That's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> if we give you $1,000, that's going to help you stop being poor, and pound cake will start to like you. It's a grand from the Buzzard Bookie. Listen closely, and good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Check. That's check. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Alan, since we're all watching it now, House MD, Season 2, Episode 3. They mentioned rat bite fever on a couple of occasions. It's not the ultimate diagnosis of the episode, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, I always thought we were making a joke. I didn't realize rat bite fever. Was no, it stemmed an from thing. an actual. Did it? B- yeah. Is that what it was? There okay. was there was an outbreak of rat bite rat fever, and that's why we <laughs> had that whole sounder made. Oh, uh, boy. And you can leave messages for us on the iHeartRadio app. A lot of people like to use that. It's quick. It's easy. A little talk back button there. The nobody gives a hell, more disasterful, fly high, die high guy. Please leave more messages. (laughs) That was fantastic. I want more of that guy. Please. Wherever you are, Godspeed. Just let me hear more of that. I think mm-hmm. it's the uncompetable guy. Yeah. Isn't he the one that leaves those messages? And I think I met him last summer. He came up and he's like, I'm the uncompetable. Uncompetable. This guy called, left a message yesterday. Nobody gives a hell. I get the airplane disaster can be much more disasterful. But whatever, dude. YOLO fly and die high, baby. <laughs> <laughs> YOLO fly and die high, YOLO, baby. YOLO fly and die high, baby. I love it. I think I met him when I was doing an appearance. I was at Game On in Lakewood when we were chompers. We were putting people on oh, that's right. Captain yeah. Fun's floating Fandango. Yeah. Putting people on the cruise. And people had to come out and play Battleship, and I think he came out to me, and, and I think he's that guy. I want to use his teeth as veneers one day. What do you mean? Because he has great teeth. Oh, you remember him? You sent the picture, and I was like, damn. Oh, when I met him. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You took a picture. Well, listen, maybe someday you can um, – your teeth are fine. Oh, no, I, I like my teeth. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying if I ever were to ha- get dentures or need a stencil, I'm like, that guy. A stencil? Those- is that not I don't a, know. What is, is mold? that? Like, do they stencil it before they create the teeth? Well, I don't think they stencil it. You, mean, you just a, mean a mold. Yeah. Mold. Okay, I don't know the process of doing Oh, it. I didn't know if that was something I wasn't hip to. or No. I, that might no, be but, something. I don't know. A stencil. I don't hang out at a dentist office <laughs> that much. Hey, baby, you got a yeah. stencil back there with my name on it? Nobody stencil. gives a hell. I get the Nobody air- gives a hell Nobody is gives good. a hell is Nobody great. Nobody gives a hell. Nobody gives a hell. This one's full of bangers. I get the airplane disaster can be much more disasterful. Well, whatever, dude. YOLO, fly and die high, baby. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so I second that guy. Hey, call, uh, leave messages whenever you want. Brian calls whenever he wants. He doesn't care. Let me throw a beat down. Oh, Brian. Oh, yeah, he's... Let me throw a beat down. A yeah, beat down. No, not, no guitar. <laughs> throw a beat down. <laughs> Yeah, Brian's calling. I had to wreck our 
don't know my sound recorder, and I just can't hear the splurting out the words in my head saying boom, boom, boom. Wow. Ryan, let me lay it on a beat. I'm tired of playing guitar, because usually he calls all the time, yeah, well, and he'll just play guitar he's on the phone. He's diversifying. Let me throw a beat down. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to have a whole song. <laughs> Boy, it's pretty good. All we need is a bass and some lyrics. And throw some dick mandolin in there, yeah. and man, that's going to be pretty, pretty good. Okay. Well, thank you, Brian. You and um, YOLO, fly high, die high, baby. You guys can leave messages whenever you want. Uh, Stansbury and I were talking about it kind of briefly before I came on our little crosstalk or whatever. Talking about this whole Taylor Swift Super Bowl conspiracy thing. It is really funny how, for whatever reason, right-wingers, and again, I don't think it's like right-wing people. I think it's the dudes that are trying to get clicks. It's like podcasters. Yeah. It's all these, like, other jags. They're, like, well, losing their minds over Taylor Swift, that there's a conspiracy to get Joe Biden clickbait is elected again because, yeah. oh, my God. But what's the conspiracy if they, they – she supported – like you said. She supported talking, him in 2020, yeah. and she's a young woman. Mm-hmm. This is another genius play, by the way, from that MAGA crowd. Hey, how do we distract women from the fact that we're trying to legally control their bodies? I know. Let's go to war with Taylor Swift. What what an amazing plan from, I don't know, Get pro- probably the mind of Steve Bannon. I don't know. You want to talk about F around and find out. Wait till the Swifties come after you. Putin and Hamas combined are nothing compared to that. <laughs> the most dangerous people on earth. Going Swifties. after Taylor Swift. Because of the Super Bowl. And there was a clip going around, too, of some, I don't know, one of these Republican conferences, and the guy's, like, going off on whatever the psyops and all that nonsense. And he's like, hey, the left got celebrities. We have celebrities, too. We have Ted Nugent and John Voight and Kid Rock. And they're like, yeah, and Taylor Swift. I mean, she's Scott Bayo. I think Scott Bayo and Ted Nugent versus Taylor Swift and Bruce Springsteen. I, I think I think it's going to be okay. Let I'm, not too, it I'm out. not too worried about Let it. Let the people decide. Yeah, that's right. Although I will say, he takes a lot of heat, but I met Scott Bayo in the early 90s, and he was a genuinely nice guy. People give him a hard time all the time because he's like one of these Hollywood MAGA guys now. Him and the Hercules guy and um, well, Hercules John Voight. Guy is, Kevin Sorbo, yeah. is that, he played Hercules. Yeah. Is that who he played? On the syndicated tv series right and so there's like this this you know the usual suspects there's like this cohort of these you know far right wing celebrities and scott Bayo is always in there too but the, the one time i ran into the guy he couldn't have been nicer so maybe he took a turn in the past 30 years which is entirely uh, entirely likely but i don't know he's the, he's the only, and again I, i've met kid rock on a number of occasions and i like him a lot too but some of these people their friggin' heads are exploding and it's so silly. You really, really have to twist yourself into a pretzel to come up with a conspiracy about Taylor Swift, who is the most popular person on the planet right now and extraordinarily influential. She doesn't need the Super Bowl, you realize. You guys have flipped the script. They need her. She doesn't need that. Well, they don't need her either. Uh. But she definitely doesn't need the Super Bowl. She... Th- there's nothing they're going to do that's going to get her more attention. And I, by the way, I thought all these right-wingers were boycotting the NFL since Colin Kaepernick. They forgot. So what do they even care what happens? And they I thought you guys weren't even be... going to be looking at the Super Bowl. And because of, the, of Bud Light and all, all, the, all the things. Nike, that they, they, they have all these different boycotts that they keep forgetting to boycott because Nike makes the jerseys, Bud Light is a huge sponsor of the you know, NFL. Boycotts take a lot of work, and they yeah. get boring. Boycotts are probably fun the, from the jump, and then they get boring. You got to keep doing them, doing them. They're going to be real mad when we start calling them people cots. <laughs> uh, <laughs> person cot. Mm-hmm. 
I'm going to break. Uh, after the break, I will have your spot on my tubing team, the Coxicles. We're going back to Boston Mills Brandywine for this year's Polar Blast Battle. It's February 23rd, so I will uh, give you one of the slots on my team when we get back. If you want to get all the details, look into it now. Go to WMMS.com and hit the contest tab. The Alley.